As the scene unfolds, a girl confesses from the bottom of her heart. She always liked Sion and queried him. If he is fine with it, would he go out with her? Sion told Emily to wait a minute. She called him out, but Sion denied it and stopped her. He holds her shoulder and tells her that he thinks of Emily as an important companion, and he can't go out with such feelings. However, Sion was in the midst of speaking, but Emily interrupted by asking him if she was not attractive. Despite her interruption, Sion responded, that's not true. He thought she was perfect just the way she is, and then she responded to him then, so he asked her if she could give him more time to consider. And in response, Emily bid him before announcing that she hoped that he could give her an answer after they defeated the Demon King. After she left, he immediately fell to his knees on the ground. Talking to himself, he said that he had almost lost his composure. But what to do? To think he'd be confessed to by Emily. And just recently, a girl approached Sion and expressed her feelings by explaining that she feels bad for Emily and Luna. But she can't control her feelings, and she asked him, won't he consider going out with her? Just then another girl also explained to Sion that she knows they were in the middle of their journey. But she can't help but fall in love with him realizing that his companions Lamia and Luna confessed to him too. Looking up at the sky, he thinks this is a bummer. Now he has three relationship proposals to consider and simultaneously confessions. He smiles and refuses himself, and he thinks he shouldn't be smug. But there are three people who confess their love to him. Of course, he would be overjoyed. In this world, a decree dictated the existence of 16 heroes, who are roughly divided into two classes, attribute heroes and divine power heroes. The former are heroes who are skilled in a specific elemental power like fire and light, and the latter are heroes who have acquired special abilities such as divine eyes and godspeed. Sionax is one of the attributed heroes, and it has already been 13 years since he became the hero of darkness, falling into the former category. During their journey, suddenly the group encountered a poisonous slime, and Sion announced, Here it comes. This is a poisonous slime. Then Luna shouted and told Sion to leave it to her, and if it is a poisonous slime, then fire should work. She attempted to use fire against it as a flaming sphere, but she quoted herself as saying that fire isn't its weakness. She used wind, but it bounced off, and again, she noticed that it wasn't wind either. This time, with her full strength, she used a water spell, but it proved ineffective. She mentioned why her magic is not effective at all. Lamia, with her knowledge of the creature's weakness, intervened in between and told Luna to step back and she'd do it. Lamia says that a poisonous slime weakness is either fire, water, wind, earth, or lightning, but lightning in most cases. In other words, she said that it wouldn't do much since Luna doesn't have the lightning attribute. Luna responded, Lamia, no fair. She just wants to show off to Sion. Lamia attacked with lightning, successfully defeating the slime. Lamia told Luna about any comments, but she didn't respond to her. Emily shockingly told her she did it. Then Luna pushed Lamia by shouting. She did it. Suddenly, Luna collapsed, and Lamia ran toward her, holding her, which she called Luna. She responded, it's poison, and she collapsed. The situation escalated with the slime splitting into two more poisonous entities. Looking at the slime's Lamia, she said it couldn't be, and Luna responded that its weakness is Earth. Afterward Emily and Sion ran toward both Luna and Lamia and asked them if they were okay. Emily explained that they needed to treat the poison fast. Lamia apologized and stated, let's retreat for now. Emily refused Sion, but he decided and quoted that he could take it from here. Emily was trying to speak when Luna interrupted and explained that the poisonous slime's weakness is earth, and Sion's dark magic won't straight away. Just as Sion opened his hand, something like a round eye was visible. It was a dark orb, and he said softly that darkness released its power. As soon as he noted this, the dark orb showed its power and destroyed the poisonous slime. Three girls were in shock, and Luna shockingly said, That's amazing, then Lamia stated that, as expected of Sion, and Emily also praised him, saying that he was awesome today too. Sion responded to them that it was only thanks to the effort of the whole party, and they all should try to do their best today too. Suddenly a girl states, Man, what's wrong with them? Blurted Luna and stated that companion and whatnot. Sion is just too overpowered, so there's nothing for her to do. Lamia responded that her magic and swordplay are nothing compared to Sion. She never helped him during the fight, and then Emily expressed that she has only ever healed Sion once, and it was just a scratch. They have three signs. Sion told them to wait a minute. For the longest time, they three have been helping him fight, and it's not just the fighting itself. They all helped him to keep him grounded too, and then he further explained that when he stepped in too late to help, 
he was blamed for the demon that killed a family's father. They all defended him, and without them, he would have stopped being a hero a long time ago, so he's telling them not to make that face. Luna apologized and happily told him. She guesses that she was just a little nervous. After Luna, Lamia speaks, too, and she'll train more to show her worth. Excitedly, Emily agreed and stated together, let's try our best again tomorrow. Sion expressed thanks to them, and now let's continue on their journey. He thinks ever since they met three years ago, these three have become his true companions. But suddenly Luna told Sion, for now, can they split up? Sion got confused and asked them if he was going alone, so Luna told him to come to the inn in the nearby village at nightfall. Then Lamia held Sion's hand and apologized to him and continued. But that's because they had important preparations to make. And Emily agreed with Lamia and announced something very important. For Zion's party, and surprisingly, he thought, today is his birthday, so will the party be as big as last year? He stated that then he'll just go and kill some time. Girls responded to him to wait for tonight, and Luna quoted that don't eat dinner beforehand. Then Emily told them to see him later, but before they went, he stopped them. Wait, there's something he forgot to tell them, and he explained that erase sorrow from this world. Thanks to her for not laughing at such a silly goal, and for always following him like this he bowed to them. By hearing his words, the girl's eyes filled with tears. He was shocked to see them in tears and apologized to them. He asked, did he say something wrong? But Emily denied and wiped her tears, and Luna told him that she just got something in her eyes. After that, they bid by telling him to see him later. Sion signed and quoted to himself. He guesses it was a bit much. He stretched his arm and was self-centered, saying that he has time until nightfall, but what should he do till then? So, he decided that's it, and the feast that will be happening tonight. He can't leave them to take care of all the dishes, and he started to run, shouting that he was becoming 25 years old today and getting a grip on himself. Reaching the forest, he stated he had come all the way to this place and would be late if he didn't go back. Suddenly, he heard something, and there was an attack by a goblin in which girl and boy fall on their backs, and by looking at them, Sion thought from the looks that they couldn't hold a candle against the goblin's superhuman strength, and they were unable to work properly with the wizard, and they'd be wiped out at this rate. He asked a man if he needed any help, and the man requested and responded that he doesn't know who he is, but it's too strong. Before Sion took his sword out, he responded that the man understood and was attacked by his sword and that the goblin was cut into pieces. Three of the people were stunned by the view and thought that in just one swing of the sword, the goblin was cut to pieces. Sion told them, he has to go now. Hey guy, wishing you a happy new year. If you like my work please subscribe to my channel and help me to grow it. Enjoy guys. The story continues. But one man interrupted him by stating, hold on, as they haven't thanked him yet, and by looking at Sion, and questioned if he is Aksama, wearing a mask, jet black clothing, and an appealing voice that's definitely him, right. Sion accepted it and responded that he is. They all gathered and told him they were hoping to meet him someday and that it's an honor to be helped by someone so great like him. Then Sion responded that he's glad they're safe, and here he is standing in front of the door. He got frustrated and conveyed why he's feeling so nervous and that it's just his birthday. Suddenly, one of the servants opened the door for him, welcomed him, and asked him if he was Aksama, and he nodded to her question. She mentioned that a reservation has been made for him today, and Emily and her friends are coming now. He removes his mask and speaks tiredly. Let's calm down for now. He wonders where those three are. As he removed his gloves, Lamia called him, and Luna apologized for the wait. He just gets amazed by them. He told them, wow, they three look amazing and the girls responded that they're glad that he liked it. Suddenly, Luna placed her hand on Sion's cheeks and told him that he was the focus of the event today, and Lamia wished him a happy birthday. His gift from Luna and her is a sword sheath and a mask wipe. The one he's using is quite old, and just then Emily stated that her gift for Sion are these gloves, which she hand-knitted herself and hopes makes them cozier. Then Sion responded, thanks to her, he'll take care of them all. Luna asked Emily when she had time to knit and stated that stealing a march on them is unforgivable. Sion interrupted them and responded with tears to Luna, don't say that. Luna was taken back and stated why he was crying. He denied it and responded that he was not crying. Suddenly, Lamai grabbed his cheek and said that he was so cute and that she would just eat him up. However, this thing here is not suitable for his birthday. So, let her take it away as she grabs the sword, and Sion responds, thanks. Just then Emily intertwined her hand with him and asked him if he would like to remove all these rings today as well, the hero's proof ring for his birthday today, and earrings too. But he responded to her with his magic defense earrings, but suddenly she removed them all. 
Suddenly, Luna told him that they had a surprise for him now. He asked them for a surprise, and that reminds him, didn't he peak last year? But this time, he properly closes them. He thought, what's this? Suddenly, he's losing his strength. He opened his eyes, seeing that three girls were tying him in the chair. He stated that three, what are they? As girls use their power on him, he thought his eraser restraint earring that he just handed it over to Luna, and girls started to laugh, and told him at last, they finally caught him, and they can't believe how long that took. Suddenly a man enters the room, and Sion quoted that they are heroes of fire, wind, and earth too, and thought, why are they here? The hero of fire told him he'd tell him why they are here. This is their master plan. Three years of work are coming to an end. Luna explained, that's right. To destroy him, they've got to cooperate with each other. The hero of Earth told him that the companions whom he trusted were all their subordinates. After hearing this, Sion gets really angry and states that it can't be. Again, he shouts that's a lie, right? The three heroes mentioned that he's so naive, but thanks to that, they succeeded. Sion asked them why they were doing this, and the hero of fire explained that nobody can win against his power head-on. Even the demon king was scared and had gone into hiding. The hero of wind explained to him that she'll admit that she is jealous of him. He's not only strong, but more than that. He's the most famous hero in the land. They told him the strongest attribute hero was Axe, so-called masses. Even the divine power heroes who look down on us treat him as the one exception. The hero stated enough chatter to quickly take away his magic power. Since it's him, they'll need to work together. And I told him don't hold a grudge against them. As they put the stone on his back, it broke into pieces. The fire hero announced that 90% of his magic power is gone. He told the hero of the wind to take care of the rest. She steps outside and throws the piece of stone in the air. After that, she thinks it will be scattered all over the world by the power of the wind. Getting inside, she stated, why don't he try to collect all the fragments? Now they are standing together and stating that now, so that he can't approach either the heroes nor the demon king anymore. They shall teleport him to the dark forest now. Before three girls teleported him, Sion got angry and asked Luna if those words that she gave him when he was depressed were all lies. Next, he shouted, Lamia, when she laughed happily with him when they practiced swordplay, was it just a forced smile? Next, he asked Emily, who always said they had a bond. Did she ever really think so? Breaking the rope with his full strength, he shouted, please answer him. Everyone was shocked. The fire hero asked what and how. They took his power away. The wind hero screamed to the earth hero and told him this is bad. Quickly teleport him. The earth hero responded to her hang in a minute. Sion again asked, answer him, Luna. Then he called Lamia and Lamia replied that she was. She also did the same as her real party. But when he showed his hand to Emily, she responded that she's sorry. She only acted as she was ordered to. Sion stated so. That's the truth of it. Even if she tries her best, even if she finds something irreplaceable, in between, the earth stated that he's going to kill them, so the fire hero told him to do it. Do it now, and the earth hero used his stick and spell expulsion, and Sion starts to disappear. He thought his life would always be like this, and they teleported him. Looking at the sky, he thought he had never had companions. Everything was an illusion. Their love is no longer true. He believed them. He believed in them. He believed it all, and he shouted in this dark forest that he thought no sword, no equipment, and his magic were also stripped away. If this is really a dark forest, then at this rate, while thinking about all these, suddenly someone came and attacked him. He thought of a high ogre. He called out black wings that spread out, and his wings attacked that ogre and made a hole in his body. Sion thought this kind of opponent was no good. The ending of his life as the hero with this kind of inelegant monster is just pathetic. Walking in the cave, he saw a white fox. He thought, what is this? This sensation on his skin. He told himself to keep calm. What a beautiful creature. He can feel its intelligence even in its posture. He asked the fox if she spoke. The fox responded, of course. He told her that her pronunciation was very smooth. She responded by saying that she played with humans who had entered this forest. Again, he asked her if she was going to eat him. She smoothly denied it and responded that she wouldn't eat him. They both looked at each other and stated that at the same time, Sion asked her if she would kill him, and she too asked him if he would slay her. This is the meeting of the strongest hero in the White Fox. The White Fox who wants to die exclaimed, he will never forget that day. It was his eighth birthday. A man and a woman were killed and hanged from a tree on the floor, and a man was holding a girl by her hair after killing her with a sword. They were none other than Sion's family. All this happened in front of his eyes. The next moment they were about to kill Sion, a man came in between them and cut their heads with a sword. Putting back his sword, he stated how cruel. There's only one survivor. Come on, it's all right now. 
Xion describes Fox and how the bandits killed his parents and his sister. The hero of darkness saved his life. Then he became the discipline of the hero of darkness and took over as the hero at the age of 12. Since he became a hero, he has had both happy and painful memories. Then he met those three, and he finally believed that he had real happiness. Happiness always falls out of his hand. If there is a thing called fate, he's sure he was born under a bad star. He asked Fox if he would kill him, but at the same time, Fox also asked him if he could kill her. They both got shocked together. Sion asked Fox, did he just tell him to kill him? Fox responded, he did. Then he asked him if he too, and he responded, same here. He voiced what a coincidence. But Sion started laughing. He asked him, what is so funny? Sion thought, come to think of it. The way he talked was very similar to Grandpa living in the past, which he denied and apologized to him. Somehow, he seems like a human being and he is smart, too. Then Fox started to spin his tail, and then he stated that Sion is too kind. He is just a fox. He thought a thick tail, fluffy fur, soft front legs, twitching ears were somehow calming. He stated he wants to talk to him for a second. Maybe. Fox responded likewise, but before that, let him burn that thing first. He burned that monster. Sion responded since he was distracted. He didn't notice. He responded, Chibolin, they are skilled at sneaking behind his back. He started chibbling, and he told Sion, let's go to a calmer place. He'll show him around. Sitting in a calmer place, Sion was trying to say he, but Fox introduced himself and described his name as Hakuko. He could call him Haku. He identifies himself as a male. Then Sion introduced himself too. He's Sion. He supposes he is a former hero. He responded that he understands. He has a little bit of human knowledge because he has lived for over 300 years. May he tell him the story of his life. Sion responded that he would like to hear it. Haku started to tell his story. He used to move around with his family. They settled down in this forest. It was peaceful for a while, but his parents eventually died. His mate died. Even his child died too. Eventually, even his grandson died. Sion asked him, did the monster kill them? Haku refused and responded that it is due to natural causes. He is a variant. Again, Sion thought the variants were mutated monsters. He's got great power, so his lifespan will be greatly lengthened. Has he been living alone all this time? While losing one loved one after another, Haku continued. The average lifespan of a fox demon is about 50 years, but he was alive and well after 300 years. He doesn't want to be alone, to keep seeing one he loves dying. While speaking, he saw Sion crying and was shocked. He asked him why he was crying, Sion. He groans and responds that he's not crying. Haku asked him, isn't he crying his heart out? His tears are overflowing, and Sion responded, it's sweat. Haku smiled and thought, he never heard anyone say that before. Haku responded, oh, that's right. Now he wants to hear Sion's story. He wonders where he should start. Sion quoted that he knows how he feels. He lost his family too. The one he loved, Haku, cried out loud and thought Sion's life, since childhood, was way too sad. He asked Sion what the saddest part of his life was. He responded that his grandpa next door, whose tone was similar to his, had died. Crying. Haku saw and responded while wiping his tears. He asked, but it must be very painful to be betrayed, and those heroes were terrible, too. Is he not going to take revenge? Sion voiced that it was fine, and then he stood up and continued that he had lost his will to live. Haku stood up too and asked, is that so? So shall they die together? Sion stated. If he's okay with that, Haku responded to him by saying that he's very welcome. It's better to die together than to die alone. But he chuckled and told him, well, he's not a human, though. Sion quoted that's the strange way of laughing. Immediately, Haku changed his expression and asserted that then, shall they die soon. Then Sion took out his black wing sword and responded, he's always ready to go. They both stared at each other and Sion thought he never thought he'd die like this. He had never imagined it until just a few days ago, but this is surprisingly not bad. And they're just about to start the fight when suddenly Haku started eating, and Sion told him that his food requirement is quite impressive. Haku gulped his food and excused Sion and quoted, He may look like this, but he eats quite a lot. Sion denied and responded that he meant the size of what he eats. Haku took the food in his mouth, but after hearing Sion's word, his food dropped from his mouth, and he asked him if he meant he's fat. Even though he has a slim body, Sion responded that meat is falling from his mouth. Haku thought because she said something strange. Taking his food into his mouth Sion thought, however, how did this happen? When our serious techniques to kill each other were about to explode just now, and they grumbled and collapsed. Haku told him, why don't they eat something before they die? 
he never thought this would overturn his big decision. Faku stated he doesn't like raw meat very much. That's why he roasts it. Then he burped and quoted, excuse him. Sion laughed and uttered so. A white fox burps too. This world is full of things he doesn't know about. Haku responded that he's embarrassed. Haku touched his shoulder and asked him, doesn't Sion have nothing left to do? He's lived too long, but he's different, isn't he? Sion voice not particularly Haku stated that that is the truth and is there no one he wants to meet or apologize to? Sion thought and quoted someone he wanted to apologize to, and Haku stood up and asked so, there's someone, then. He was circling around Sion and conveyed to him, let's go meet them. He can still die after doing so. Sion responded, but Haku cut him off by announcing there was no but. He drops himself and requests that Sion get on. He wants Sion to sit on his back. Sion was slowly hoping for him, and he excused himself. Just then, Haku stood up. Sion shouted so loudly that Haku asked him where the person he wanted to apologize to was. Sion responded that Karo village is in the same region as this forest. Haku growls and states that he knows that place. They've been indebted to him in the past. Then he started to run fast, and Sion shouted, wow, and he thought maybe it was fate. I am meeting Haku here. I got teleported to this place by chance. Maybe she's telling him to visit her grave at the end. Sion stated that he's sorry he had to run for three days straight. But Haku denied it and responded that this place hasn't changed at all. Sion stated to Haku, tell him about the relationship between him and the village. So Haku responded when he happened to stop by at a young age. He helped this village because it was attacked by an ogre. He doesn't think there are any people from that period left. They both started to walk, but then a man called them and stated, aren't you the Master Axe? Sion responded, greeting. It's been a long time. A man called everyone Master Axe is here. Slowly, everyone is getting out. One girl was shocked, and her mother stated too. Really, two boys run and state Master Axe. Everyone is gathered around and states it really is Master Axe. They have been waiting for you all this time. They're so happy to see him, Master Axe. One girl shouted, Master Axe, thanks for coming. Then an old man came from among them and informed them that they'd been waiting for him to come. Sion voiced Mayor, and Mayor responded, It's really been a long time. After hearing this, Sion remained silent for a second, and then he stated that Lin was here, and the mayor told him Lin was out right now. He thinks she'll be right back. Sion thought so, first of all. They moved to the graveyard. Haku stated hey, Sion, he seems to be very popular. They completely ignored the supposedly rare fox monster. Sion told him a long time ago, he used to take care of everyone here, and Haku listened to him and didn't utter anything. Then they stopped at one grave and placed a flower on it, and Sion continued. She's the one he loved, and she died because of him. Facing the grave, Haku joined his hand and stated that his name is Hakuko. He's a friend of Sion. Just then, someone threw a potato at him, and it directly hit his head. He said potato, and his head started spinning. The girl stated angrily, what is he doing here? Looking at her, he stated, Lin, it's been a long time. He said he'd never come back here. Sion apologized to her. She again threw potatoes at him and stated angrily that if it was a grave visit, he had already finished his business. Now go away. Just as the mayor came in between, he stated, Idiot, how could she say that? What happened to Marie is not Master Axe's fault. On the contrary, much of this village was saved thanks to Master Axe. Lin asked, Apologize, but why everybody? Like it was all her fault. She's had enough. And the mayor shouted at Lin and requested Sion to forgive her, and he apologized on Lin's behalf. Sion requested, Don't do that. Mayor and Lin's attitude is natural, and he doesn't want him to be too hard on her. He stated, Excuse him. Can he leave him alone for a little while and then everyone left him alone? Looking at the Marie grave, he thought a lot of things had happened since then he ended up. He's decided to stop being a hero. Then he thought about Marie, and she was telling him, welcome back, and she's glad he is back again. He asked Marie, will she marry him? She responded that she wants to live with him forever in that village, and they happily held each other's hands. He thought about the past. A wyvern attacked the village shortly thereafter. It has been spotted in the vicinity for a long time, and the villagers have raised their voices in concern but he couldn't prevent it. Standing in front of a man, women, and a small girl, the man stated that while Master Axe was away, a wyvern attacked the village, and Marie was caught in the flames, protecting a child who fell behind. The girl was crying loudly and stated, why didn't he come back earlier? Then she grabbed his shirt and continued, saying that if he were there, her sister wouldn't have died. He stated that he'd protect her sister forever. Axe is a liar. Coming out of his thoughts, he stated who Marie is. After that, 
Sion knocked on the door, Lin opened it and stated yes. When she saw he's none other than Sion, she angrily stated still. Before she continued, Sion conveyed, can he help her? He just wants to talk to her. She responded what? He continued, and he decided to quit being a hero. So, if there's anything he can do for her, as atonement he supposes, he pauses for a second. But she states, well, then. Crossing her hand around her chest, she told him, catch her the golden snake. He responded with the golden snake, and if he's not mistaken, it is a very rare breed of snake. She told him she asked him on that day, didn't she? And she had a bad feeling about it, so she told him not to go. But he immediately bows to her and apologizes to her. He's really reflecting on it. Anger took over, and she told him he didn't have to bring the snake. Instead, don't ever appear before her again, and then she slams the door. Looking at the ring on the table, she expressed, big sister, and tears started to flow from her eyes. She continued what she was supposed to do. Sion was standing outside the house, looking at the door when Haku called him, is he done? Sion responded about right. Now he wants to go find the golden snake in the mountains. Haku started blinking his eyes and stated it is really valuable, right? But Sion asked him, do he want to go, or does he want to stay? Haku stated that honestly talking to the mayor, he thought what the mayor told him, to begin with. This village is originally a place where the heroes who received the blessing of ancient times stopped by on the way of their training in the place where it starts. There are farming producers. If Haku likes, he can have reduced his stamina a lot, then he announced he's going. They reached the mountain, and Haku asked Sion, is it on this mountain? Sion stated it is. Haku stated that if they are lucky, it will just take a few days, but if they're not, they'll be sleeping outdoors for a month. Sion asked him, it's better than the dark forest, isn't it? Haku responded, not at all. Then Sion thought he didn't expect her to forgive him with this. Still for Lin, he's going to find the golden snake. Sion stated that just like its name states, the golden snake is a golden-colored snake and what makes it troublesome is that it's a very cautious animal. It almost never shows itself openly, so they really need to look high and low for it. Haku responded as soon as he got it. Sion quoted great, then let's split here, and just then Haku stated right, he almost forgot. Haku told Sion to take these. These are way better than being bear-hunted. Sion expressed that these are really nice. Where did he get this? Haku told him the Karo Village item shop's owner gave it to him. He kept refusing his money, even though he really wanted to pay him but he said that it's nothing compared to what he's done for them. It seems like he is really loved by those villagers, isn't he, right? Sion. Sion responded yeah, they really are kind people. On the first day of the search, Sion asked Haku, did he find something? Haku mentioned, does a tiger keelback snake count? Sion told him to be careful L won't bite as long as you don't pester it. And also, no, it doesn't. Then a snake hissed and bit Haku, and he shouted that it bit him. Sion responded, it's very venomous. Haku screamed, and he fell and continued. It hurts Sion. Sion screeched at Haku, and Haku stated that he was really glad that he met him. Closing his eyes, he stated farewell, and Sion looked at him for a while and uttered so, does he think he'll get an award for that acting performance? Haku happily agreed, and he stood up, laughed, and apologized to him. Caressing his tail, Sion stated that he sure is a mischievous one, aren't he? Haku responded how nostalgic they were that all the time, when his family was still alive. Sion signed and stated, fine, just don't forget to look for the snake. Haku noted sure. The second day of the search Sion signed and voiced they couldn't find it at all. Well, no one said that it's going to be easy. Just then Haku stated, by the way, that he'd heard about Lin and Marie. Or rather, the mayor was telling him on his own. After taking a little pause, Sion said that he saw it. Haku told him, and if he asked him, it really wasn't his fault, Sion. Sion responded, thanks. Suddenly Haku stood up and stated, hum, all this talking is making him a bit hungry. Not even a blink of an eye. He dashed out from there while uttering he'll go hunt something, Sion said so fast. An hour later, Sion stated, don't you think that it's a bit too much? While looking at the dead meat, Haku responded well. His belly kept telling him to go hunt more, so Sion sign said, fine let's cook them all then. Haku responded happily, sweet. The third day of the search Haku stated come to think of it, what does the golden snake look like again? Sion, he means it's been a while since he went out. It's definitely not because he was wet, senile, or anything. Okay. Sitting in the tree and looking here and there, Sion told him well, it kind of looks like a pit viper, and its scales have this unique dark yellow color on them. Haku pointed at the snake and asked him something like that, Sion told him. Yeah, something like that. Hem, that thing will probably sell for a lot, doesn't he think? 
They paused for a second and screamed, wait, that's the one they're looking for. Then he jumped from the tree and both started to chase a snake. Sion stated, Haku, get to its right side. Haku responded, I, Captain. Then he looked at the right side of a snake and tried to catch it, but the snake dodged him. Haku expressed tiredly that this snake is way nimbler than he thought. Sion stated that, if possible, he wants to catch it alive. Haku responded then I guess he'll use this skill. His hair started twitching and forming a needle, which he started to attack. It stabbed into its body, and the snake started to wiggle. Haku stated he called it the fur needle. By changing its hardness, he can choose whether to give it a sleep or paralysis effect when it hits. Sion mentioned the nice one. Haku responds, here he goes. Sion took the snake in his hand and quoted that they were the ones he used just now, sleep needles. Haku admitted to him that while looking at the snake, he was confused and informed. Wait, why is it still awake? Sion got him and answered that it's probably because snakes don't have eyelids. Haku's mouth opened wide, and he back-faced Sion and mentioned that he'd been living for 300 years and that he didn't even know about that. Sion stood beside him and caressed his head. He spoke. Now, he doesn't care if he doesn't know much about snakes. It's way more impressive that he can shoot out his fur like needles. Haku happily quoted that he really thinks so. Sion responded of course, it's all thanks to him. Haku. Haku laughed and praised him more. He's sure that Lin will absolutely be overjoyed. When she saw the golden snake that they caught, Sion responded well. He just hopes that this will be enough for his first and last atonement. Haku said, don't say something that's sad. Sion paused for a second and continued, he you know, he's been wondering for a while, but just why did Lin want him to catch a golden snake anyway? Sion thought and spoke. It's probably because it's a rare monster. He means she'll get a pretty penny for sure if she sells it. Haku voiced that he feels like he's forgotten something about golden snakes, but he just can't put his finger on it. Suddenly he widened his eye and told him, Sion. He heard three beasts' footsteps, and they're closing in real fast. Get on. They'll be put in a bad spot if they stay like this. Haku started running, and damn, they caught up to them already. It seems like they really are aiming for them after all. Sion mentioned watching it here, and they came. Sion responds, just leave it to him. Then he started to kill those beasts. They all started to whimper. Sion expressed as he thought, he's really strong. Haku responded it wasn't much. He means it, just like any other beast. He does have his claws and fangs, after all. Sion asked, and he can also use fox fire as he pleases, right? Haku noted well, only if his enemies are at a certain distance. It's not that effective for some types of monsters, though. Again, Sion asked, but he does have those skills that let him shoot his fur, don't he? Haku conveyed what can he say? He's a fox with a thousand mysteries. Anyway, let's just deliver this golden snake to Lin. She must be waiting for it at the village. As they reached the village, Sion mentioned is it just him, or does the village seem odd? Haku responded, yeah, let's make haste. Sion voiced, Major, what happened here? The mayor told him, Oh, Master Axe, thank goodness you're here. A group of bandits suddenly raided their village just an hour ago. Many people got injured. One woman voiced, Goodness gracious, Sion asked them, What about the bodyguards that they rented? The mayor responded, They were killed by them. Then the bandits' leader was powerful, even more than they could have imagined. Sion was shocked and asked by the way, Where's Lin? Don't tell him. They kidnapped her. The mayor agreed and asserted unfortunately, but not just Lin. They also took every single woman and child with them. Sion asked which way they went. The mayor said to the south and begged him. Can he please help them, Master Axe? Sion expressed that he doesn't need to beg him, Mayor. This is where Marie was born. Of course, he will do anything in his power to save it. He took the sword from the ground and spoke, pardon him, but he's going to borrow this sword. Then he moved toward Haku and asked him, will he help him in this, Haku? They both toasted their hands, and Haku expressed himself by saying that he didn't need to ask. Of course, he'll go with him. He winked at Sion and expressed that even if their destination is hell itself. He hopped on Haku and screamed, wait for him, he's definitely coming for them. Then he thought perhaps a disaster like this is a common occurrence nowadays. However, it's not just the demon lord or the monster's fault. Because the real evil can also dwell in human hearts, especially in the conflict between humans, like between nobles and peasants, which can even force heroes to pick a side. And he's already sick of that world. He witnessed his family killed in the middle of their trip with his own two eyes. That's why he swore to God that he would definitely change the world when he was chosen as a hero. However, even after he becomes stronger, there are things that he just can't change. Like human greed, it knows no bottom. But even if he knows, Haku shouts that there they are. Sion thought that he couldn't change the world. Haku told him it must be those people. There's no doubt about it. Sion screams. He's never said that he's thrown away his heart too. 
They reached close to those bandits. One of those bandits' men spoke. Boss, they have a pursuer. It's a monster tamer. One of them announced all units, full stop. They all stopped. Now they're facing Haku and Sion. Sion uttered, they have around 13 men. Getting off Haku's back, he continued, and their equipment is way too good for mere bandits. And there on the truck, all the women were sitting harmfully, but Lin was unconscious. Sion asked, was it he who hurt her? Bandits stated they had no choice. They resisted them until the end, after all. They just passed out because they fought too much. Besides, it's not like she's dead, right? Getting angry at his words, Sion voiced why he raided the village. He's not just a simple bandit, are they? That bandit mentioned what a sharp guy. Then let him tell him this is his last gift to another world. They're members of a mercenary group, and they were told to grab some bitches. Sion asked who offered you. Bandit responded, why should he tell him that? Then he told his man, they lot, go and kill that big dog. It's nothing but a big dog. Kill it. Listening to this word, Haku got angry and stated how rude. He's a fox, mind it. And he attacked them. They threw and hissed in pain. Then one of them stabbed him with a sword, so Sion asked Haku if he was okay. That sword was broken, and Haku responded, Don't worry about him. His fur is rather hard after all. Leave. Now that Bandit and Sion were facing each other, Bandit spoke. Does he know why he made all of his underlings fight with that monster dog? Sion responded that it's probably because Haku is stronger than him, right? Bandit answered not quit. It's because they will only get on their way when they fight. Sure, he might be strong, but he'll never be able to defeat him. That's because he has this power, which he got personally as a hero. And he attacked first, but Sion lost his mind. Sure, he might have a unique power. Sion was avoiding all his strikes, but if it's just at this level, even if it's something that he got from a hero, Sion dodged him. Bandit spoke, sure he could afford to be lost in thought. Then he strikes at Sion, but Sion dodges his strike and asks if it's this level of strength. And he charged at him, but as he dodged, Sion thought he saw through it. And Bandit mentioned his power is quite good. But Sion again tried to charge at him. Bandit stated, this is magic. Saber of destruction and strike on Sion as he tried to dodge. His sword broken. As the bandit was ready to charge at him, he stated, this will finish it. Before his sword could do anything, Sion disappeared. Bandit quoted, he disappeared. Where did he go? Slowly, Sion came up from the bandit's shadow. Sion uttered, I got you. But again, bandit dodged it. Sion stated again, it's not a dodge in response to his attack. It's faster than that. It's as if they already know what's coming in the future. Bandit stated now that's dangerous. Just then that was dark magic, right? Sion answered. That's correct. Bandit asked him if the previous skill was insight. Sion responded that it's not a skill to sense someone's presence and took a pause. If it were just that, then he would only be able to sense so much. If they combine with his statement about the hero from earlier, the hero of foresight granted him the power to see into the future. Then that means his client is the hero as well. Bandit responded that part is wrong and that aside, there's nothing left he can do. He can't even receive his attacks and even more. So, he doesn't have a sword. Sion looked at him and asked if it was a sword. Oh darkness, he still has one. Manifest before him in the shape of a morose sword of false. Then he swung his sword, Bandit stated. It's useless. He can see all his moves. Sion voiced that it doesn't matter even if he can see them. And suddenly Bandit asserted, what? Even though it's midday, all of a sudden it becomes dark. It seems he's lost his sight. But his eyes weren't cut. Sion told me that originally. With one slice of the morose sword, he would lose all of his senses. But it looks like he can only steal one sense the way he is now. Bandit fell on his knee. And Sion noted that continuing any further is pointless. Isn't it about time that he gave up? Bandit responded yeah, he'll give up now. Sion gasped and stated, wait but it's too late. The bandit stabbed and killed himself. Sion voiced, was he too late, Haku? He's done over here. Sion spoke as expected of Haku. Now then it's just those girls, isn't it? Sion held Lin as she opened her eyes. She voiced Chen. He stated that Rin doesn't have to speak. She asserted he coughed. Sion stated her condition is quite severe. He took out something from the pouch. Good, there's one left. This is an exposition she'll recover if she drinks it. She asked, is that so? Using it on someone like her. Sion responded that it's because it's her that he's using it. Now he put that potion in her mouth and she completely gets well and he stated that they have 10 at home. It's not a medicine. Sion responded that it just means that those 10 she has are cheap ones. Then she started crying and mentioned why, even though she'd only said cruel things to him. He noted that it was fine. Anyway, for now, you should rest. As he was leaving, she stated, she's sorry. He smiled and showed his thumbs up. They reached the village. Mayor mentioned they only have words of thanks to give him. This is just a very small amount, but please accept it. 
They want to give him coins, but Sion expressed that he should use them for the reconstruction of the village. In other words, he is not good with bright things since he is the former hero of the darkness. There was an awkward silence, but Haku was laughing. Sion thought how strange that, excluding Haku, they didn't get his joke. How embarrassing. He stated, please rest assured that there are no bandits left. If by any chance they feel any strange presence or occurrence, they'll come back. So before he could finish his word Mayot held his hand and quoted from start to finish, thanking him so much for everything. Sion asked afterwards if he could please tell Rin this as well. Mayor asserted he'll go call her. Sion refused and responded that it's fine. He's about to leave anyway, and they both leave the village. Reaching a distance, they both looked at the village, and Sion stated, I guess this is his last look at that village. Haku asked Shinsen regarding that matter. He has something to discuss. Sion responded that he would like to consult him a little. Just then, someone voiced Shin. Wait. Sion responds, Rin. She came all this way to see him off. She stated pantingly that she has something she wants to say. She hasn't said it yet, so actually she knows everything. That day, her sister asked him to go to work. He responded that even if she says that, his sin doesn't disappear. She calmly conveyed that it's not something like a sin. That's not it. Just then she burst, and he had no responsibility for that. He was always working for the sake of the village and her sister. For someone else's sake, he was already being a proper hero. She put her hands on his shoulder, hugged him, and mentioned that she was a child and was so sad that she had to blame someone. But she couldn't. She was weak. But she's already stopped, so she won't say it anymore. Sion stated Rin, before he could speak further, backed away and stated, that's why. He also has to live for his own sake from now on. He quit being a hero, right? Then that's already plenty. Just how many people has he already saved, even if there are difficult times? He isn't allowed to die. She gave him a basket and stated, here, she'll give this to him. As he saw the basket, he expressed this is, isn't this the golden snake that he gave to her just before? She stated if he makes sake out of it just like that. It's very delicious. Drink it on the way to the city. Sion responded he'll gladly drink it then. Then she embraced him, and she stated she'd be waiting for him when he visits the village again. He responded that he'd definitely come again. They bid each other just then. Haku stated from Sion's behind that he remembered. Sion got scared and responded, Ops. Haku quoted he apologized. Sion spoke, but he remembered something important. Haku spoke regarding the sake made from the golden snake. Sion responded that he wants to hear about that. Haku asserted that about 300 years ago, he heard an anecdote from a particular man. When the man was tired of life, apparently his wife made him drink some of that golden snake's sake. After he did, the man suddenly became livelier and said that he eventually forgot about suicide. Sion thought that Rin had already seen through everything. Then Sion mentioned Haku. He has something to consult with him. Haku spoke go ahead. Sion asserted that regarding the decision to die together, would it be alright to postpone it for a bit? A yet unseen world may still be out there, as Haku stated earlier. He also wanted to inform him of that same thing. For a little longer, enjoying life doesn't seem to be bad, then his stomach growled. Sion told Haku-san, as expected, about his rumbling stomach. Haku voiced his bad, how embarrassing. He'll go get some prey, and just in a second, he's gone. Sion thought, what a strange feeling. Just a short while ago, he was the hero of darkness. Just a short while ago, he sought death, but now he wonders if this is that thing people call their second life. A journey wandering with a white tiger and living like that does not seem too bad. Just then, there was a man who thought his plan failed, even though he went to the trouble of sharing insight. Shin, just how far can the former hero who has lost their power go? On one side, Shin thought to him that everything was seen, and on the other, a strange man thought this was him, the hero of foresight. The impenetrable city is hailed as the impregnable city. It has stood against invasions from surrounding countries and, obviously, from demonic beasts. The wall surrounding it was made from rare materials. It's impervious, be it from cannon, magic, or demonic beasts' attacks. To be more detailed, it's generally strong against conventional magic-based attacks. Magic tools are not an exception either. Shin told me for a long time that the organ was known as the place where the hero of the gods I hailed. Haku mentioned he was speaking about that. He may have heard something about him in the past. Shin responded that there are a few conditions he must fulfill to be a hero. Did he know it? Haku expressed that he won against the current hero in a duel. Did he? Shin stated that one is true. The other one is being acknowledged as the successor to the current hero and passed down or inherited the hero's ring. He's the latter one, though, but either way, both must possess the same elemental aptitude. He never met the hero of God's eye. 
It is due to the power of the eye to be able to completely perceive enemy movements and strategies that the organ became the impenetrable city they currently know. Haku responded that he saw it. They both started to enter the organ, but guards stopped them by stating halt. Both were there, where they are now. Well, how rambunctious. Shin stated he's a mere traveler. This is his familiarity. This one absolutely won't bring harm to people. Guard queries prove it. Shin quoted Haku, sit down. Haku responded as you wish and sat down. Then he started tickling Shin with his tail. Shin laughed and said, come now, Haku. It tickles. Haku spoke. This is how he expressed his affection to his master, additionally removing dust from his cheeks. Guards stated to other guards that White Fox's styled communication technique. One guard seemed smart, and precisely, isn't this demonic beast a wolf? No, a fox. Looking at Haku, he continued, its size is absurdly huge, even more. The demon foxes that are native to this land are gray. He never saw a pure white one. Haku noted that he's a variant. Guard responded that he was capable of hearing their conversation with a sharp ear. Other guards announced a variant or not, as expected of an rank demonic beast familiar. Guard stated to Shin, though it's unbelievable for it to serve a simple traveler very well. Is there any way they could use to prove that the demonic beast is a demon fox? They can't have him entering the city without a detailed registry. Haku responded just in case he can use a technique that's common for a demon fox. The guard voiced, then please demonstrate it. Haku responded and understood, and just then he raised his head and roared. After then, Haku stated happily that it's a technique called the demon beast's roar used to frighten the enemy. It has the effect of depriving the enemy's courage. Shin sighed and mentioned that Haku was the only one listening to his explanation. Haku asked why, and Shin told him why. He spoke. It's because everyone aside from him fell unconscious. Haku was shocked. Shin signed and conveyed there's no helping it. This time Haku responded, forgive him, he overdid it. Sion told him, well, don't mind it. Everyone is all right, and they're permitted to pass through the gate. But surely, it took them some time to enter the city. They're able to enter only by showing the ring. It's different from the hero of darkness's time. Hey Haku can they register as adventurers first? He doesn't feel right if he doesn't have an objective to do. Haku asked, then it's off to the adventurer guild third division branch, isn't it? Everyone there was looking at him with fear. Haku mentioned they all fear him. Shin stated he thought they knew he's familiar, but he guesses it's something else, like Bazer instinct. Haku stated, hope on, please. Shin responded he guesses it's better this way, though he really doesn't want to stand out. Haku told him aside from the white fox, he's also called a myriad colored fox. Should he tell him about his hidden abilities? Shin expressed that it's fine because he completely believes him. Adventurers Guild Organ, 3rd Division Branch. Everyone is looking at them. Shin quoted they're doing this so they won't stand out, but it seems impossible. Haku stated he believes it's due to the fact he's now standing here, young master Shin. Shin stated to the girl, excuse me, they want to register with the guild. Girl responded if he wishes to register, she will first elaborate on the guild. The Adventurers Guild is an allied multiple country organization that works in coordination and information exchange. Each country may have one central branch, and incidentally, all three guilds in an organ are division branches. Adventurers are divided into seven ranks, from E to A, S, and SSS, if he does not accept a request for a long time or if he repeatedly fails to complete a request, he may be demoted. Registration procedures are varied for each branch. At one place, he may not need any prerequisites, while others may require an examination. She uttered an examination. Then she stated that once the registration process is complete, a card showing this identification will be issued. Could it be that Shinsan is a familiar user? He responded that he's not, actually. She shockingly asserted then, if he isn't a familiar user, why is he such a powerful demonic beast? Shin stated that he has a relationship with this one. He's not a familiar user, but Haku is not dangerous, so please rest easy. She responded very well, then would Mr. Shin kindly tell her his proficiency? Shin announced he's proficient with a sword, but he can also use magic. He can use several low-class magics, although the one he's most proficient with is dark magic. She slammed the table and screamed dark magic. They both got shocked by her reaction. She continued, and that's wonderful. Like Aksama, it's very admirable. Shin voiced it just then. Haku stated that he also respects him. The girl also responded that she's actually a great fan of him. He's very cool. It's been many years since he came to this town. Haku stated, hum, he also wanted to meet him in person. But unexpectedly, he came to town today. Shin requested and noted stop it, Haku. The girl did hem and stated regarding the registration, they have a total of two exams. The long-term exam will be to take on quests every day for three months in this guild. 
and the short-term exam will only take half a day at the most. The latter is not recommended. However, Shin asked her what the contents of the short-term exam were. She told him she would only be able to tell him once they'd confirmed his determination to go. Shin thought that meant the short-term exam was quite dangerous or really difficult. But thinking about the time, the long-term exam was inefficient. Shin and Haku both looked at each other, and Shin stated that he would like to take a short-term exam. She responded that he may get hurt or even die in the worst-case scenario. If he's still willing to take the exam, please sign here. Shin signed the paper. Standing in the hall, one man mentioned newcomer. It seems they've unfortunately chosen the short-term exam. The other man stated the weak demon tag. Shin responded with a weak demon tag. A man told him applicants who received this exam ran around the town like weak demons. That's where it gets its name. The registration girl came to him and stated here, take this. She'll explain the contents. Shin Sam, within the next 12 hours, gather the hats of the adventurers that are currently here. If he's able to do that, he passes. But if he runs out of time or if his hat's stolen, he fails. Shin asked, can he take their hats using any method? She agreed and responded. However, the same goes for the adventurers. They'll get a 10 second head start. Please escape in the meantime. Haku asked, shall they run away? Spinning his head, Shin responded, Um, if they were to split up outside. Haku stated it'd be a hassle. Shall he take care of them at once? Shin responded, It's his exam, so he has to do it by himself. He wants Haku to help him, though. Haku quoted Roger as saying that. An adventurer stated that familiarity is probably strong, but they've got the advantage in numbers. He showed his sword at Shin and voiced, Stop looking down on them. Shin stated that wasn't his intention. It's just that he was thinking of a way to gather all of their hats at once. Adventurer voiced, then did it. If he can, that is, Shin responded. Then he'll do it. He opened his hand and showed the cube slowly. It's getting dark. Looking at this, everyone stated, his vision was suddenly blocked. The girl quoted, what in the world is happening? They can't leave using doors and windows. Some of them mentioned don't use their weapons. They'll hit each other. The girl thought that even though she can hear everyone's voices, she can't sense their presence at all. It's as if she's sucked into the darkness. She won't be able to move a single step like this. Someone uses light magic. And then he pushed her. But Shin caught her and expressed that it was careless of him to use it when she was here. Suddenly everything got visible. And he asked her if she was hurt anywhere. Because of their awkward position. She immediately pulled herself away and denied and mentioned. Excuse her, don't tell her that was his magic. Shin stated well. She said any method works. She voiced Shin San look. But the voice that interrupted her was none other than Haku. Haku stated that he's gathered this many hats. Shin was shocked and responded, he's gathered a lot as well. Haku responded that he may have gathered more than him. Shin stated, let him count. Three, four, five. Adventurer stated darn it. There's nothing they could have done in that darkness. Another adventurer asserted that he didn't even notice that his hat had been stolen. They were able to do all that in a blink of an eye. Haku stated that Shin San was splendid. He was able to pass without fighting or hurting anyone using dark magic. Shin voiced normally, saying that the dark space he used earlier should be able to swallow towns or even cities whole. It seems that his magic has been weakened a lot. Haku responded that was weakened, and Shin stated he'd have to get back his magic little by little. Leaving that aside, he has some money left, so shall they look for an inn to stay in for the night? Haku mentioned he won't be able to stay there. Shall he sleep outside of the town? Shin denied and responded that he's pretty sure even familiars can stay in this inn. Haku stated, wouldn't it be expensive, though? He'll earn a lot starting tomorrow in return. Just then he feels something and expresses it, leaving that aside. Shin stated, don't you feel like they're being watched? Haku admitted and responded, ever since they've entered this town, the hero of foresight, he presumes, Shin stated that the truth is, he feels like he's been getting watched for the past two years. Haku asked him two years ago. Shin responded that he'd heard that the hero of foresight was replaced two years ago. Haku mentioned that it means that a new hero is keeping watch over Shinsan. But two years ago, he was on a different continent, correct? Or are they that capable? Shin told him their abilities are either very high or it may be the work of someone who has nothing to do with a hero. After all, there were a ton of guys who wanted to keep watch over him. Hake got speechless for a while, then he asked, may he go gather some information? He wants to know many things, heroes included. Shin stated he doesn't mind, but will he be okay by himself? Haku agreed and quoted that once he's done, he'll return by following Shinsan's smell. Shin told Roger that, see you later. Shin reached the inn as he saw a bird and quoted Love Beast Inn. Thank God his memory was correct. Then he entered the inn and mentioned that it smells of beasts, and he doesn't hate it. Just then he heard someone's voice say they can pay the full amount. 
he knows, it's just that they're on an expedition to this town because of that person's order, and yet he gave them no discount. A man stated well, it looks like they have no choice but to report this to the hero. One boy stated that even if he says that, don't be surprised, but their master is another boy voiced as Aksama, the hero of darkness. By hearing them, man got scared, and Shin thought he'd never met them before. Those bastards were using someone's name without permission to perform evil deeds. Man asked boys do they have any proof, as they got customers like that once in a while customer who borrowed the names of the heroes but boy grabbed man by his collar and asked what did you say. Man denied and responded he's not doubting them guys, but suddenly a man stated in between that's enough guys. A hero's disciple shouldn't be acting like a punk, and in the first place, are they really Aksama's disciples? One guy laughed and conveyed that he'd give him some proof right now. Then he attacked the man by uttering blackening. That man got confused and voiced that his magic power was getting sucked. The guy stated it was ridiculously strong dark magic, and this is all his fault, he knows. Now the man is shouting, and Shin responded that if this continues, he will stop them. That guy quoted customer, another disturbance, but he'll let it go this time, and another guy asked, How's that, sir? Now do you believe that they're Aksama's discipline? The man noted that he understood and requested they don't need to pay so they may leave. The guy stated to Shin, sorry about that, see him boy, and Shin got angry. As those guys started walking away, Shin announced, hold up and use that magic on him as well. The strong exploit the weak, and he's always hated that way of thinking. Did they learn that strong dark magic in order to not pay their fee? It looks pretty cool to him. Then one boy stated that he wanted to end up like that man earlier, but Shin voiced that they should do it if they could, as he'd been telling them that since earlier, and then they both attacked Shin. One of them responded that they'd sucked in this much magic, no matter how strong. Suddenly, Shin holds both of their hands and states, as long as you benefit, it doesn't matter what happens to others, and he's seen many people ruin themselves because of that way of thinking. Both guys quoted shockingly, this guy and how is he fine? They should have sucked his magic. Shin responded that when magic in the body is sucked out, they'll collapse like that man over there. But what do they think will happen if the roles are reversed? He sucked their power, and they both shouted in pain. And Shin stated humans have an acceptable amount of magic power, and poison can be medicine only if taken a little. But if you take too much, it'll become harmful. And they both fall on the floor, trying to stand. But Shin said they've exceeded their magic limit, and it seems that they can only suck with blackening. One of them said he didn't feel so good and requested help. Then Shin stated they've only exceeded the limit by a little bit, and they'll be fine after half a day. They responded, first guy, he can't wait that long, and second guy, he'll pay him money. But Shin spoke dangerously to them, no shit. Clean the floor that they vomited on and apologized to the manager of the inn and the others. They both apologized to him. Then Shin sat in front of them and stated that he feels like this punishment isn't enough. Shin moves toward the man whom those guys attacked before he does something. Thanks to him, he's recovered a lot, and he's ashamed. As Shin started to move, a small girl held him with his hand and spoke happily. Thanks, Oni Tan, and Shin thought, thank God she's laughing. Then he holds her in his arms and states, he's welcome. While laughing together, he thinks he's glad he was able to protect her. Just then, Haku uttered it loudly. Shinsan, is he here? By looking at the atmosphere, he quoted what a delightful atmosphere is, and Shin goes toward him and states, Haku, that was quick. A small girl laughed and noted Big Doggy, and smiling at her, Haku told her he's a fox. After that, Shin asked the inn manager, is there a room for Haku and him to stay in? The manager stated he is his savior. He'll give him a 30% discount, and Shin responded, thanking him very much. Their Haku thought he didn't know what was going on, but it seems that Shinsan has done something good. Now they both sat in the room. Shin asked Haku if he was able to gather any information. He stated that he'd found some information on the hero of Foresight, and it seems that they've been gathering information on him for quite a while. Shin saw it, and Haku again stated that there were multiple heroes, to be exact, and they were the more popular and stronger heroes. Shin agreed and quoted that the relationship between heroes is pretty complicated sometimes, and there's no point worrying about it. He responded that they'd come sooner or later. Haku uttered that he thinks he'll be fine, but shall they prioritize getting back his power just in case? Shin stated that he can somewhat guess where the magic stone is with his senses, but let's take the guild's quests for now. Haku responded, understood, and then the girl came to their room and voiced Onatan's dinners ready, and he quoted all right. Haku stood up and uttered, he's starving, Onatan. Then Shin smiled while looking at them and thought, good grief, they'll have to earn a lot of money starting tomorrow. The next day, they reached the exam hall, and the girl noted four goblin wrists, 
30 island mushrooms and 8 yoru grasses. All of the items have been confirmed. She asked, he must be very familiar with plants. Shin mentioned only a little bit, and girl stated, thank him for his hard work. Then Haku responded, he's still got energy to spare. Then she uttered that Haku-san's fluffy is beautiful like always, and after completing this many quests on their first day, these guys are amazing. As she caressed Haku, she introduced her as Lily, and she hopes they can get along in the future. Shin asserted likewise, and she got shy and stated that Shinsan can use dark magic and is very strong, just like Aksama, whom she admires. Just then, he announced that she overestimated him, and in the first place, he's not even a hero, Lily stated. But yesterday, he didn't hurt the people that bared their fangs at him. She was also saved from a dangerous situation, and to her, Shinsan is a very kind hero. He blushed and said, she's embarrassing him. Right, Haku, but he was nowhere. There, Haku laughed and uttered, he'll leave those two lovebirds alone. He shall go hunting in the meantime. He has to earn his own food, after all. When Haku came for hunting in the middle, he saw three head monsters roaring, and Haku voiced Thunderbolt. They started fighting, and just then Haku killed them and uttered, the job is done. But he wondered if Shinsan would be happy, and then he held the monster with his mouth and took him back to Shin. After he reached, he stated, Shinsan, is he there? Shin quoted where he was, but Haku stated, can he go outside a little bit? When he saw outside, he got shocked, and Haku voiced that he went haunting in the mountains. Looking at the monster body, everyone starts gathering. The one man mentioned isn't this three-headed serpent that was to be subjugated and to be able to take care of such a monster that easily. Lily's co-worker stated Lily didn't accept the quest to subjugate the three-headed serpent three days ago. He'll call the master. She agreed, but suddenly one girl came in between and uttered, There's no need for that. And I introduced her to the fact that she is the guild master of the third branch. Her name is Roan. And after that, she quoted so, he's the super rookie that joined yesterday. And then she winked at him and stated that he's pretty good looking and also suited to her tastes. He blushed at her words, then suddenly Lily came in between them and mentioned, Master, she can't, and Roan started laughing and stated, For the time being, come to her room. She would like to talk with them guys, and as they entered her room, she uttered that she just received a report from another adventurer earlier, and it seems that B-ranked party Goldhelm had had enough battles against a three-headed serpent, and that they were saved by an unknown familiar. Looking at Haku, she said it was him who saved them from the serpent. Shin stated, good job, Haku. He admitted it, then Ron stated since it wasn't a quest, she can't give him any money but she'd like to thank him somehow. So she asked, will he sell her the corpse as the market price is around 600,700 coins, but they'll buy it for 800. Haku was surprised and expressed that much, then Ron stated it's a serpent after all, and its body fluids and fangs can be used to craft tools. Deal. But Shin thought, rather than selling it, that it would be better to craft magic artifacts and weapons. The stronger the monster, the better the weapon crafted from it, after all. But suddenly Roan stated, how about this? There's the case with Goldhelm, so they'll give one million and a bonus, and she'll increase their rank to see they both get shocked. The next day they were both sitting and eating. Shin stated that he did an amazing job yesterday, Haku. While eating, he voiced that he wants to become a proud beast who can take care of themselves after all. Shin stated he said all that, but the true motive was to save the party, right? Haku thought the truth was that he didn't even know the party was there. He can't tell him, though. Chewing his food, he asked Shin, are they going to the guild today? Shin uttered, is he talking in code or something? Haku stated, excuse him. Are they going to the guild today? Shin told them to buy a weapon or look for the magic stones. He's debating which one he should do. Haku asked him so he feels like finding the magic stones now. Shin stated he wants to avoid any problems in the future by getting access to sealed magic. And it seems that one of them isn't very far but going empty-handed won't help him relax. While wiping Haku's mouth, he quoted that there are magic artifacts and swords in the weapon shops in the organ, but they pale in comparison to my old weapon. Haku responded then, as a test, let's go to the Life Guild, and since there are many requests in the urban areas, he can accept them even though he's not an adventurer. Shin asked, but wouldn't he make more money with the Adventurer Guild? Haku stated that the Life Guild is connected with the Magic Artifact Association. There is an old man sitting and expressing, would he like to register? There are two types of requests, personal one and one from the guild. The former is mostly just helping out with random work, and the latter is to deliver tableware, resolve incidents, etc. He will be rewarded with points, not money. Points can be exchanged for food or tools. There are no ranks, and registering is easy, but if he fails to complete multiple requests, they'll have to ask him to leave. Shin thought that. 
considering that they are working together with the Magic Artifact Association. He could accept that they'll have a convertible item and that he might be able to get his hands on a powerful artifact, so he stated to the old man that he would like to register. The old man accepted and voiced lately, the number of requests has increased, so they are glad to have more people register. His name is Saprin. Shin stated he's looking for a sword. May he see the exchange list? Saprin uttered, of course. As they both went through the list, Haku was shocked, and Shin thought the Midnight Sword would ult save 8 million p. This sword is known to be very compatible with dark magic and is very durable. It required a lot of points, but he wanted it no matter what, and Haku thought the illusion bore. A meat from a rare monster must be delicious. Saprin asked them if they'd found any goods they wanted. Then he thought he'd be able to submit this powerful monster. There's no way this youngster is nobody, and he might be able to resolve that incident. And he stated the goods they too desired were very expensive. So how about this request for a magic artifact robbery incident? He again thought it's a request that even adventurer guilds and lords from different countries can't even resolve. And he noted the difficulty and reward would be high. Will he accept the request? Shin agreed to it, and Saprin stated while opening the door, please come this way. This is the Magic Artifact Storehouse. Magic artifacts are transported to various places from here. An artifact will be transported today. Shin said the security is pretty tight. Saprin stated there are magicians and bodyguards on both sides, and there are multiple barriers erected. However, they have been attacked repeatedly when their defense is weakest, while they are transporting the goods. Even if they hire strong escorts, they always end up massacred, so they don't know who the culprits are. From the way they do things, they think that the chain of reapers is involved. They are a group of criminals that perform evil deeds and steal magic artifacts from various places. Shin mentioned the attacks take place at night. Is he correct? Saprin admitted it and responded, Does he happen to know anything? Shin thought if they were a dark magic user, they would be able to leave no trace. Saprin Sin has a plan. Can he promptly notify the people in charge of the transportation? Saprin agreed to it. Shin asked Haku, does he sense anyone watching them right now? He shakes his head and denies it. Shin responded the same way. He asked Shin San what his plan was, and Shin stated that since he couldn't use detection magic, he'd set a trap. Well, it's not a big trap. He'll deal with a dark magic user with darkness. As they were preparing for artifact transportation, the person in charge stated they couldn't afford to get today's artifact stolen. Saprin, they leave it to him. Saprin agreed to be in charge. They are taking artifacts, and just then someone came out of the shadows from behind and tried to attack that man before he could attack him. That man hid in the shadows. That guy announced that he hid in the shadows to think that there would be a dark magic user here. Saprin asked who he was, and Guy quoted, Fuck, he got caught. Is that grandpa the dark magic user? Just then Shin kicked him, and Shin started to punch him. That guy was in pain and uttered a martial artist. He's strong, but no matter how strong he is, this will finish it. And he voiced dark magic tentacles bind. And again, he quoted running away won't do him anything. Don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. We love reading your comments so please leave your thoughts and suggestions below. We have a lot more exciting content coming your way.